These rows of G's, A's, C's and T's are the unique genetic code of Cheddar Man. After 10,000 years, he's back. The data is good, the quality is good, uh, a lot more than we thought, so that's brilliant news. So I'm just getting it prepared here, ready to send off to UCL for some further analyses. We're not seeing um, large differentiation between the population to which he belonged and the populations in, for example, Spain or um, Germany. I think it would be fair to say that he's more a European than he is a Brit. The team have proved something else too. Further back in time, Cheddar Man's ancestors came from the Middle East. They move across from the Near East, um, mix with um, standing Mesolithic populations mm. that are uh, um, moving north into Europe and then end up in um, in Britain, in well, southern Britain. Yeah, because no one's shown that from Britain before, have they? In no. fact, we've got samples from Europe, but so this actually shows that they actually would have come all the way across into the UK as well. With hyperpigmentation, so with light skin, were both uh, absent. We do not find neither of them. So that suggests uh, uh, the absence of a light skin phenotype. Okay. But most likely a, a dark skin phenotype. Dark skin, especially with blue eyes, is surprising. Now Johan has to work out how dark. The skin pigment news spreads quickly to other members of the team. I assume that's going to be a big surprise uh, to most members of the public. It was certainly quite a big surprise to me. It may be that we have to rethink um, some of our notions of what it is to be British, what we expect a Britain to look like at this time. It's a real breakthrough. What the team have discovered strongly suggests that paler skin in Britain and Europe is a far more recent phenomenon than anyone previously thought. It really shows up that, that, that these imaginary racial categories that we have are really very modern constructions or very recent constructions that uh, really are not applicable uh, to the past at all. Two weeks later, and the Natural History Museum is about to witness the unveiling of a new head. The first Brit is in town. After all the work, the time has come. Uh, nice that you all come here to uh, reveal the Shadow Man. Uh, I want to remind you, it's your data we worked on, yeah, so, yeah. so part of it is your work. But here, we will reveal it for you guys. One, two, two three. three. Goes. Oh, hey. Oh, brilliant. Are you shocked already? Yeah. <laughs> really, really cool. To have uh, done the genetics for someone or to have looked at their DNA so closely as we have done with this and then to actually see that made into flesh is, uh, is yeah, it's amazing. I guess it's the only time this will ever happen. I think the, the Kennedys have done a fantastic job. He's alive. He's, he's a person now. He's not just bones. It's been a long and extraordinary road. Four months of work for the artists, two years for the scientists, ten millennia for Cheddar Man, to finally bring us face to face with the first Brit. <laughs>